Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Scott Sports Show. I am your host, Tyler Trumbauer. The football team was in action this past Saturday at Sox Harrison Stadium, defeating the Seton Hill Griffins 31 to 27 after being on the road for the previous two weeks. And to talk about that matchup, joining me today, I have the WFSE Sports Director, Mike Fenner, and Edinburgh's head football coach, Scott Browning. Gentlemen, how are we feeling today? Fantastic. We're feeling good. All right, Coach, last week we talked about how often Seton Hill throws the ball. I mean, they still put up 69 pass attempts in the game, but were you surprised by how maybe low the score was it is, as it only ended up 31-27? to 27? Are you expecting more? Yeah, you know, our defense, I thought, did a tremendous job. Uh, you know, they, at the end of the football game, last two series, you know, they, they put you in a tough situation. You don't know if you want to – to blitz and come up with a big play defensively, but in the same token, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I think we chose defensively to try to uh, just slow play, make them earn everything that they get, and run the clock. And uh, they still came up with two touchdowns, made it real, very close at the end. Uh, but the important thing is we came away with a victory. Absolutely. Were, were you uh, surprised by how much defensively that became a factor in this game? I mean, we were talking about offenses and the firepower, and it might just be – does the clock run out on whatever team and who has the ball last and such? Were you ex happy and also surprised with how much defense played a role on Saturday? Our defense played a tremendous role. We had some players really step up, uh, whether it was a sack or knocking down a pass or we had an interception or two, and, and uh, I thought our guys played well. And if you're going to throw the ball 69 times, you're going to come up with some big plays. I was probably more surprised that they didn't uh, go the air earlier in the game uh, Instead, they waited to the end of the game uh, when we had them 31 to 14. And like you'd said, they threw the football still 69 times. So previous week they threw it 72 times. So it's it's kind of they are um, they are who they are. Yeah, definitely. With forcing turnovers, coach, a pair of interceptions for your defense and four total turnovers. How critical of a role did those play for your defense in the game? They're they're critical. Uh, you know, I think we had 14 points off two of the turnovers and. Uh, you know, I thought our defense really stepped up. Uh, you know, they got us on the ropes late in the game, like I'd said, but the bottom line is we forced them to take snaps and run the clock. Uh, they used their timeouts, and, uh, you know, we come up with a victory. How impactful did you find Tommy Dover's play? He really was getting after the quarterback a couple of hurries, a forced fumble downfield. I mean, really a lot of hustle out of that defensive tackle spot. How impactful was his play? He, he very impactful. I mean, Tommy Dover, when you watch the tape, really stood out. Uh, he impacted the football game from his, his position. Uh, you know, Tommy gives great effort every snap. And, uh, you know, even though he did not uh, sack the quarterback, uh, you know, every time, just the hurry sometime, the, the, the hit on the quarterback affects what the quarterback's thinking the next play. Coach, this was a great win to get first one back at Sox Harrison Stadium in a few weeks. I know we talked after the game and you said that regardless win or loss, you know your team is going to come back and prepare this week for the Millersville in the season finale. But just how important do you think for, obviously, wins and losses, the team morale, just the overall team chemistry how important was getting that victory on Saturday? I think it was very important, and uh, I think it was important for our seniors. I think it's important for our young guys. Um, you know, we, we won the game Saturday as a football team, and I think that's really important. All three phases uh, contributed in a positive way to the victory, and uh, it, it, it was very important that we came away with the victory. One thing that is the takeaway from that game is a lot of injuries. It seemed like every few plays there was a, there was a fighting Scott on the ground, and unfortunately there was two running backs, and down on that one with uh, Anthony Williams and Keith Regis. Going, going forward into this last game, do you feel that might play a factor, or how do you feel that's going to pan out? You know, it could. Uh, right now, uh, you know, they're still day by day, um, and we're going to have people ready. Uh, Saturday we were counting a situation where we were looking out there with our third tailback, uh, and, you know, we were scrambling to make sure we had a fourth guy because, you know, you're one play away from losing him. And, uh, but we have a plan now, and we'll be in great shape come Saturday. We talked last week about all the star power at wide receiver, and then you've got a guy like Connor Hollenbeck that kind of comes out of nowhere, six catches, 73 yards, ties for the team leading receiving yards, and has a career day. I mean, what do you make of that? Why, why was he such an impact in that well, game? Well, you know, Connor prepares every day. He comes out, he practices hard, he's, he's before time for everything that we do. It's important to Connor. Uh, Connor does not make very many mental errors. And, uh, 
you know, he is always going to put himself in a position, if opportunity knocks, he's going to be there and he's going to be prepared to go. And I just remind you, not only did he have a great day as a wide receiver, but he stepped in. He was our punter. And, uh, you know, in some ways you could sit there and say, you know, in some ways he was our most valuable player that day. He did a heck of a job for us. He really just came out of nowhere. We talked about it in the analysis on our radio show Monday, and I was like, who? Like, I mean, we knew yeah. who he was, but I mean, to a lot of people, it's just he stepped up, as you mentioned, offensively and on special teams, just really delivered on Saturday in a big way. And you could really, like you said, without him, who knows what the game could have been Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he, he, he stepped up and made some plays early in the season, and then uh, Colby Hughes really started coming on. It kind of took away from Connor's playing time a little bit. But the thing you have to admire about Connor, he never, never quit. He continued to prepare himself every day for every game. And uh, like I say, when opportunity knocked, it, he was ready to go. That he was. Opportunity is hopefully going to knock this Saturday in the, in the season finale for your Fighting Scots football team. Got the Millersville Martyrs coming into Sox Harrison Stadium on Saturday for a noon kickoff. What are your initial thoughts of that squad? Well, they're dangerous. You know, uh, their, their record does not indicate the quality of football team they are. They've got a staff that's been their second year there. And uh, they're going to get that program turned around. Uh, like us, they beat Cheney last week, 34 to 12. They would like to end the season with two victories, which I think is very important for any team, any program. Um, you know, I think they've got that thing headed in the right direction right now. Uh, so this is a big game for them as well. With Millersville, you got the PSAC Eastern Division Athlete of the Week on defense with Joey Pham, eight tackles, four pass breakups. What do you make of what he brings to the table for Millersville? Well, I mean, he brings a lot. Uh, obviously, he's a good football player. And, uh, you know, Millersville, if you look at Millersville on tape, they've gotten better each week. And uh, that's really the thing that you've got to stress, and, and that's what you look for in a football team. Millersville, Coach, uh, as you mentioned, they're on the upswing, though. Do you feel this is a good time to catch them at the end of the year? I mean, Right now, they're, they're trying to improve, and they're going to look after a win last week, and you're coming off a win last week. Do you feel this might be maybe the most competitive game Millersville could play all year? Probably, probably is. You know, they're, they're playing now with a little bit of confidence. And uh, the good thing for us, we've got uh, nine seniors that I think are going to go out and really play hard. Uh, it's important to them. They've practiced hard. Uh, they've improved each week. And uh, then we play at Sox Harris, and we're at home. So I think that's very important for us. Coming into this last week of the regular season, uh, for uh, I mean, obviously, there's the PSAC championship game going on this, this Saturday, but we have a very important game between Millersville and Edinburgh as well. What is this week going to be like for the seniors? I mean, like you said, you've got nine seniors, very important seniors to this program, with Kyle Matula, who we'll talk to in a little, Ben Eisel, who's been here for many years, Cody Harris, who's been here even longer. Just, I mean, what's this last week going to be like for them? I, I would think, uh, hopefully it's fun, number one. Uh, hopefully they have fun preparing for their last game. Uh, I think in some ways it'll be emotional. Uh, we walked off the field last night, and it's going to be their last Monday practice. And today when we go out and practice, it's their last Tuesday. And uh, so, you know, I think, I think it's going to bring back a lot of memories when they start sitting back and they start thinking about uh, what's taking place this week. They've all given so much to this program. Um, and, you know, their football careers, it, it's winding down. And a lot of these guys have played football uh, probably starting back at the age of six, seven, eight years old. And... Uh, so it's a part of their lives. One chapter is going to close, and then another chapter is going to open. And hopefully this chapter closes on a positive note with a victory over Millersville on Saturday. Coach, thanks for stopping by. And if this is your last time coming on the show, we always appreciate your time on here and throughout the year. I know Mike can uh, agree with me on that one. Right, Absolutely, sir? yeah. I've appreciated it. You guys have been a lot of fun to work with. You're doing a great job. You Thank well. you, Thank Coach. You. We Continue. appreciate it. Stay tuned because on the other side, we will be joined by linebacker Kyle Matula. A huge reason as to why the Fighting Scots held on to their 31-27 victory on Saturday was the play of Burroughs' defense. A key player on that unit is senior linebacker Kyle Matula, who joins Mike and I on the Scots Sports Show. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you guys? We're doing well. I have to start out by asking, how much offensive, with how much offensive firepower Seton Hill had, did you think that defense would be the difference maker on Saturday? Well, I, I figured that we would have to make some plays and uh, keep our offense in the game. Like you and uh, Coach Browning went over, we forced a lot of turnovers, which helped. Um, we gave up a lot of yards, but the turnovers obviously helped us. 
Big time. 12 total tackles, uh, tying a career high. Also three pass breakups and then two onside kick recoveries. Just how big of a day was that for you and how exciting of an opportunity was that also being on that special teams unit and coming up with those big plays? Well, I didn't, I was basically just flying around on defense trying to get to the football. Um, there's not really much explanation for that. Uh, the two onside kicks were a little unexpected. I, uh, I've been on the hands team for about four years now and everybody kind of dogs me a little bit because I'm on defense and they say I don't have any hands and then I get two kicked right to me, I catch them both, so I, uh, I have a little bragging rights over everybody else on the team now, especially some of the offensive guys. Yeah, and if you don't get any on Saturday, you can say, you know, you ended your career batting a 1,000 in that category, yep. so that's definitely bragging rights there. Now, he just rallied off the stats, all the tackles, the, the onside kick recoveries, the batted down passes, and that earns you uh, Scott of the Week this week. So. How great of a feeling is that to get that accolade in your penultimate game of your career here for Edinburgh football? It feels great. Um, one of the last two games of my career, it honestly feels good to uh, be recognized for some of my individual achievements, although the win was the most important thing that came out of it. Um, it's nice to be recognized as an athlete after having two knee surgeries and going through all the stuff that I've been through and being able to being able to increase my level of play the past few weeks. We talked to Coach Browning about what this week is going to be like for the nine seniors in that senior class this week. As, as a member of that class, what is this week going to be like for you? Obviously, you already checked off the checklist your final Monday practice. Mm -hmm. um, so what is, going, what is this week going to be like as each day just gets kicked, ticked off the calendar and we get closer and closer to that final game of your football career? It'll be a little bittersweet. I've um, been playing football for... 15, 16 years now, I can't really even keep track, but um, my body's taking its toll. It's uh, had its injuries and it'll be a little bittersweet ending to uh, this kind of chapter of my life. Coming into your senior season, what are some of the goals you had that you set for yourself and did you meet those goals now that we come into this final week of the season? Well, like I said earlier, with the two major knee injuries, my main goal for this season was to stay healthy and play all the games due to, um, and, and stay healthy. Um, I did that and then my next uh, my next goal was to be a starter which I was and then just to contribute to the team and uh, make a difference. Hopefully you can make a difference on Saturday Kyle as Millersville comes into Edinburgh for a noon kickoff on Saturday. Obviously their resume in recent years is not that impressive but as coach Browning was talking about they have a new coaching staff that's in their second year they just had a victory last week against Cheney. So this team is on the upswing. Defensively, what are, what are you, as, you as a leader, the unit, and defensive coordinator Wayne Bradford looking at for this Millersville offense? Well, they like to, uh, they like to, to, to run the ball a little bit. They like to use their athleticism. Um, it's basically the same as every week. We just want to get as many guys to the ball as possible and force some turnovers and make a difference on defense. What is, what, how would you like to be remembered in your Edinburgh football career? As you said, your body's taking a toll. You obviously have your multi-skilled special teams defensively, all of that. You seem to fly around the field. Maybe you're the voice, the leader of that mm -hmm. team as well. How would you like to be remembered regardless of how Saturday turns out? I just want to be recognized as a hard-nosed football player with good character. Um, I try to carry myself out on the field as I would in, in uh, just a regular day, as I would coming in here. I just want people to realize that I'm a regular guy, and then when I step in between the lines, it's uh, something flicks, and I'm a totally different person. Hopefully when that flicks on Saturday, it's in their positive light, yes. and it ends with a victory for your last game of your football career. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for stopping by, and we appreciate it, and good luck on Saturday in the Thanks game. Thanks for having me. After a quick break, Mike and I will take an in-depth look at the matchup between the Edinburgh Fighting Scots and the Millersville Martyrs. To go next level with Edinburgh football, Mike Fenner is sticking around. Mike, Edinburgh's offense put up 31 points last week against the Seton Hill Griffins, but the defense created four turnovers. In your opinion, what side of the ball had the biggest impact on Saturday? Which one had a better day, the offensive side, the defensive side, or maybe the wild card, special teams? I'm going to duck out and say that they all played really well together. I, okay. thought that, I thought that all three phases helped each other tremendously. We talked about how this offense needed to score more points. Well, they did that. 31 points was a marked improvement from what we saw with just seven points in a pair of games and 10 points 
against Mercyhurst. We saw 31 points. They really threw the ball around well. Over 300 yards passing from Cody Harris. He was, of course, accurate again. And this team moved the ball around in all phases of the game, really. But 24 points in the first half was a huge reason why this team got out to such a good start and was able to finish it off the right way. Very true. Now let's look at if this Saturday if they can finish off the season in the right way with Millersville. What should we kind of expect from that team when they come to Sox Harrison Stadium on Saturday? Well, this Millersville program, make no mistake about it, they've really been struggling in the last several years. Since the beginning of the 2008 season, this team only has 13 wins as a program. They've not exceeded three wins in the last six seasons. They've really struggled. Got their first win on the year this past week at Cheney, a 34-12 win. So that's an improvement for Millersville. Certainly something they want to look to build on. They did have an 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. David Coates making that play. So certainly you could see something improve, you know, improving for Millersville. But this team has allowed 416 points total in losses. And that's an average of 46.2 points per game. That's something that clearly has to be concerning if you're Millersville. So Edinburgh could look to put up some serious points here as this Millersville team surrenders a ton of yards and a ton of points. And that's just some statistics from this year, Mike. But if you look back, the track record of Millersville is not the brightest. I mean, they've had definitely a rough patch as far as football for the last few years for Millersville. Yeah, for Millersville, I mean, let's be honest, they've had – Three different seasons of just one win, including the one win so far this year. Obviously, they'll look to get that second win on Saturday. Edinburgh will have other ideas. Uh, but you have a couple of two-win seasons and three-win seasons in there. Since 2008, like I said, this team just not been what they hoped to be. But Coach Browning talked about it. It's a new coaching staff, second year with this coaching staff, and they're trying to get it turned around, much like Seton Hill's trying to do, this, the former opponent, this past week for Edinburgh. So you'll obviously like to see what they can do to come out and, and maybe play a little bit better football. Uh, but, of course, Edinburgh will be looking to take advantage of some of those areas that they do not excel well in. Very true. What are some of those areas that Edinburgh needs to harp on? Obviously, they give up a lot of points, so they got to be able to score a lot of points offensively. Defensively, what is Kyle Matula and company going to have to do on Saturday to make sure that Millersville doesn't try to threaten that high point total that hopefully the Scots put up? There is a severe difference between quarterback play from last week going into the matchup and this week. Matt Misley does not present the, the kind of challenge you would expect to see uh, a defense really have fear stricken into it. Just 11 touchdown passes, 1,050 yards passing. This guy really has not given Millersville a boost in the throwing game whatsoever. They like to run the football seventh in the conference in rushing yards per game on the ground. So they'll want to try and keep it on the ground. And for Edinburgh, I would stack the box, try and shut down that running game because they will not be able to threaten through the air. Got to see if that all unfolds on Saturday, Mike. It's going to be an interesting one. Millersville, Edinburgh, Saturday at noon at Sox Harrison Stadium. And if you can't make it out to support the Fighting Scots in their 2014 finale, you can hear all the action on WFSC with Ron Raymond and Mike Fenner on the call. Mike, as always, thank you. Thanks for having me. Always in love and enjoy talking Edinburgh football. That is true. With football wrapping up this weekend, it's time for the winter sports to take center stage. Wrestling, we'll do that next on the Scott Sports Show. The 2014-15 Edinburgh wrestling team has a lot of buzz surrounding it as the squad is coming off one of its best finishes, the best finish indeed at the NCAA tournament in program history, as well as returning three All-American wrestlers from last season. I'm joined by one of them now. I'd like to welcome head wrestling coach Tim Flynn and redshirt senior wrestler returning All-American Mitchell Port. Guys, how are we? We're good, thanks. Thanks for joining me, I appreciate it. Now, Coach, let's start off with you. This season, as I mentioned in the opening, a lot of buzz surrounding your team. A great showing at the, at the national tournament last year. Uh, what was kind of your initial re uh, thoughts coming into this season, knowing what you accomplished last year and knowing what you have coming into this year? Well, it's always nice to have three All-Americans returning. I think that's a, you know, that's a good start on any season. Um, but, you know, every season is a little bit different, you know, so we just kind of look forward to, to the to the work, you know, the early season, we did the preseason and, you know, we just, you know, we're just getting started with our, our season. So um, it, it's nice to have the people coming back, but you still have to go out and, you know, get the job done. Mitchell, for you, obviously, wrestling is an individual sport and a team sport at the same time. One of the few that actually has that uniqueness about it. Being one of the top five, maybe top one, two ranked 
uh, wrestlers in your weight class in the nation, the returning All-American status as well. Individually, what's your mindset for the 2014-15 season? Um, I think I want to go out there and win a uh, national title first off. And then as a team, I think we all want to go out there and uh, kind of compete with the best and do the best that we can with the talent that we have and the work ethic that we've had coming in. Coach, you mentioned a lot in the preseason before it all got underway is that, well, how do you top your fifth place finish? Well, you go in the top four and get a team title. It's a simple, simple equation there that even I can understand that, and you haven't seen my math grade quite yet. But is that really the only thing that's going to make this season successful in your eyes as a team is to just better what you did last year? Well, no, I, I think whenever you have to look at it individually, too. You know, these kids all have individual goals that, that they, you know, they've set for themselves. So, you know, I, I want to be a part of Mitchell winning a national championship and the same with some of our other guys. So I think there's a lot of things when you have, you know, two aspects of a, you know, in our sport. You have the team aspect, but you also have the individual. So, you know, there's a lot of goals out there to accomplish. Diving into your team a little bit in the lineup, the first five is, is definitely a force to be reckoned with. With you got seniors with Corey Mines, you got Mitchell Port, you got AJ Shop, you got Dave Habit. Habit and Shop being the other two returning All Americans along with him. And you have Austin Matthews coming in at 157, the transfer from Clarion. How confident are you in those first five guys in your lineup to really maybe set a tone in a giving match? Well, I'm confident in our whole lineup, you know, if we wrestle the way we're, you know, capable of. But, you know, certainly having, you know, some senior leadership and some returning All-Americans early in your lineup, it really helps. Now, we had Clarion open to start off the season, which is a tournament that you participated in as, um, because you weren't, be able, you weren't able to wrestle in the NWCA All-Star Classic. A lot of other guys got bouts, and you said that was the biggest takeaway from that one when we talked after that. Then you had the home opening uh, dual meet this season against Pitt when they came into here. Unfortunately, you suffered a loss to the Panthers, but what were some takeaways you had from that match, Coach? Well, I, I think you take away, you know, individually what you have to do to, to put, you know, put forth a better product. You know, so individually we have a lot of work to do, but, you know, collectively we're not that far off. I mean, Pitt has a good team, and, and you know, we, a few things change here and there, and I think, we, you know, we could have really easily won. So um, we're not that far off, but, you know, certainly not there yet. Mitchell, one thing that you, you were able to, to have a nice, nice bout in that match, and you were able to get the pin, I believe, in that one, one for the Fighting Scots. With that start and obviously taking a championship at the Clarion Open, hopefully things you expected to have at the start of the season, but how, how happy were you with the first two outings for the 2014-15 year? Um, the first one, I think I could have competed a little better. Um, maybe a couple things I needed to change outside of the match and stuff like that. Um, Going into the second or the first dual meet, I guess it was, was I didn't know if I was going to be the same as I was in the tournament aspect of it or if I was going to be how my body was going to affect, be affected by some things. So going into that, I think it, the outcome was, was pretty good. Individually for you, in, in the beginning, first few weeks, obviously you know you have the skill set to be there. You were there last year right at the top, one of the best wrestlers in your weight class in the nation. Mechanically, though, tech, technique-wise, is, is there anything you really want to start improving on, working on, that you feel is going to be the X factor to turn you in from a top five ranked a wrestler in your weight class to maybe the top one in the being, the, being able to hold that national title? Yeah, I think a lot of stuff on my feet. Um, maybe moving more, more attacks, finishing quicker, and stuff like that. Coach, for your lineup-wise, you talked, you said you're, you're confident with all of the guys in the lineup as long as they're wrestling to their full potential. Some takeaways, maybe, obviously, Port taking care of business as you, as you hope he would as when he wrestles to his best of his ability. But Austin Matthews, uh, he's, he's had a lot of buzz around this team. He's kind of the, the newness inside the Edinburgh wrestling team, coming being the transfer from Clarion this year. I know we've talked about him a lot, but maybe expand a little bit more on just how much of an impact you expect him to have this year if he wrestles as you expect he can. I expect him to have a huge impact. He's a, you know, he's a national qualifier. He's in his second year. I think he's, you know, now in a, uh, a really good training environment for him. So, you know, the sky's the limit, and he has an, an enormous amount of talent. He's really taken to uh, what we try to do as far as training. So, you know, like I said, the sky's the limit for that kid. 
going forward here now, these are these are stepping stones that you're going to need to have Mitchell and Austin and the rest of the team going forward to hopefully towards a top four team finish at the NCAAs. You have the EMU duels coming up on the 15th uh, this Saturday. You have Northern Illinois, Central Michigan, and the University of Michigan coming up that you're scheduled to face at that tournament. What is your mindset heading in when you go to the EMU duels on Saturday, Coach? Well, my mindset's to wrestle better than we did against Pittsburgh or else we're going to come out of there with three losses. So, you know, just, again, trying to perform better, um, maybe just get a little sharper. You know, obviously Michigan's, you know, a top, I think, six or seven team in the country. And um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of really, really good matchups there. So I want to see how our guys compete. And, you know, another test for Mitchell. I think the kids rank fourth or fifth in the country. So, you know, I'm excited. It's going to be going to be have a lot of big bouts, a lot of good feature matches coming up. Mitchell, going through this next month, I mean, obviously, it's all kind of striving for, for March. I mean, that's where you want to be at the top is when you're heading to, I believe it's in St. Louis this year, right, is the NCAA tournament. So you want to be the best Mitchell Port you can be then. But what do you need to do at the EMU duels when you're back here and you're hosting Clarion and Cleveland State and Ohio State later in the year? What do you need to do now to make sure that you're the best then? I think I just need to perfect my uh, preparation going into the matches, um, whether it be all week or right before the match, and I go out there, and then once I'm in the match, focusing on what scoring points and what I need to do in certain positions and that point in the match. Coach, one thing to touch on quick about those duels on Saturday is it's interesting. You had the pit, pit match where it's, it's right there, it's one team, that's all you have to focus on. But then you're going to have to have three teams you're facing, three different wrestlers that, these, that your wrestlers could be facing in a given day. How is the preparation different between just going up against one team in a given duel match to having three in, in a duels in such a big grand stage as the EMU duels? Well, I think your preparation and the preparation Mitchell's been talking about is, you know, in your diet, in your warm-up before the match, um, in your training before, that all remains the same. I think what you have to do is just watch a little tape from, you know, three guys instead of one. So just a little more prep work, you know, maybe in the film room. Thanks for the time, guys, and good luck this season, but I'm sure we'll have you back on the show soon enough. After the break, we'll wrap it up this week, spotlighting the Scots of the Week and looking at the upcoming athletic schedule. Congratulations once again to linebacker Kyle Matula, who we talked to earlier for being named this week's Male Scott of the Week. Matula matched his career high with 12 tackles in Saturday's win over Seton Hill. The senior linebacker also broke up three passes, including the final two attempts by the Griffins that iced the victory for the Scots. Also, a big congratulations to Casey Jones of the women's cross country team. The senior finished third at the PSAC Championships on Saturday at Mansfield University, posting a time of 21-31. She led five total Lady Scots across the finish line as the squad earned its first PSAC Championship since 2006. Let's take a quick look at the schedule of events for Edinburgh Athletics. The swimming teams kick it off on Friday night in Meadville at Allegheny College on Saturday wrestling. We talked to Coach Flynn and Mitchell Port. They're at the EMU duels. Football wraps it up with Millersville. And the basketball season gets underway. Women's basketball will be at Millersville for the Atlantic Region Challenge. That is on Saturday and on Sunday. And on Monday, men's basketball has their season and home opener with Penn State Greater Allegheny here at Macomb Fieldhouse at 7 p.m. Try to make it out to support Edinburgh student-athletes. That's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in, and go Burrow.